a simple traffic ticket. A, a police officer goes out there every single day, writes a traffic ticket. Uh, I, all the traffic tickets I ever, it, it's funny because we talk about this, but let's go back 20 years when I was a trooper. 20 years ago, I would say 85, 90% of the people that I issued a traffic ticket to took responsibility for the traffic ticket. Hey, it's, you know, you're, you're my, my fault, my bad, take the ticket and away they go. Um, when, I, when I got to the end of my career, uh, the last part of working on the street, that had absolutely flip-flopped. I mean, I, I bet 85, 90% of the people blamed you for giving them a ticket. Uh, they blamed you. And, and what could happen every single day, a police officer issues a, a speeding ticket and they could run down to the courthouse every single day and sue an officer who doesn't have qualified immunity protecting they could sue the officer just for giving them a traffic ticket just because they're mad at it. They can make something up. Well, he just stopped me, give me a ticket because I'm, you know, black because of my skin color, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, take, take a DUI arrest, for instance. I mean, nobody likes to get a DUI arrest. Family member could sue you for, you know, improperly arresting a DUI. And if just one of those lawsuits gets through, I don't know what kind of a judgment it could be awarded on that, but if it's, even if it's just 20,000, 30,000, you know, officer can't afford that. We can't, they can't afford to pay those types of lawsuits. Plus the continually, the worrying about it. I mean, I got sued several times, you know, during my career for, for various things, uh, you know, and, and you know, you didn't do anything wrong, but you still can't help but worry that, you know, what happens if this, you know, proceeds and goes through. I mean, you do. I mean, a, a good officer just does. Um, you know, think about that. You'd have to literally hire an attorney. You, you could hire one every day. The cost of that is just phenomenal. I mean, you're going to do the absolute minimum that you would have to do because everything else that you do, everything proactive that you could do opens up a potential lawsuit against you if you lose qualified immunity. Every single thing. So you're going to have a lot of passive police officers out there. You're going to lose the, the proactive part of, of law enforcement, which is where we uh, make the most impact when it comes to public safety and going out there and you know, basically doing the job, um, protecting the public. I mean, you don't do that being passive. The only way you can really do that is being proactive and going out and trying to stop a crime before it's committed. Uh, but if you got guys who are worried about, you know, geez, if I pull this person over, I'm likely going to get sued. If I, you know, police officers, you can't blame them. They're, they're, they're not, they're just for their own protection and their own survival they're not going to be doing uh, very much proactive. Well, you know, as the, as the host for the FOP podcast, this comes up all the time with my guests. And it is a huge issue because a principle that came into play with the United States Supreme Court back in the 60s, um, that the agency that you work for, the city, county, state, is going to indemnify you. And so that if you're trying to do the job the right way, but a mistake is made, uh, when they sue, if they sue, um, they can uh, say, hey, you know, I've got qualified immunity. I was trying to do what I was doing correctly, following policy, but things went awry. And that gives some level of protection related to the, the lawsuits that could be coming your way or to the way of the city or the county and so forth. And they can exert that per the Supreme Court rules. Uh, otherwise, it becomes chaotic out there uh, and we can't actually function. Uh, with the Illinois bill that came through House Bill 3653, now you can have these uh, complaints that are completely anonymous. So every ticket and every brother's cousin is going to be sending those things in, and we are going to be inundated with that to the point of uh, non-function, in my opinion. And yes, people are leaving. They are leaving law enforcement. I'm talking to them daily. Uh, the ones that can retire are retiring. I'm still working. I, you know, I did retire from the state, but I'm still part-time working, but that's going to come to a screeching halt. I will not risk my family, my estate, and my future for law enforcement when people don't appreciate what the hell we do for them. And additionally, we want to make sure that our citizens have the best possible protection. That requires cities and counties and state government to provide for those employees, those people who have this passion to go out and help um, the quality protections that's necessary to do it. Uh, otherwise, this is non-functional. And, you know, we got Iowa that's adding to their 
uh, immunity. We got Georgia that says you cannot defund police. Uh, there is Missouri that's going to get a police officer's bill of rights. There's a ton of states that are starting to go the opposite way on this. They're seeing the real dirty underbelly of the lies that are being perpetrated on the public. And the media is involved in that, of course. Uh, some elements of government's involved in that. Well, I'm sick and tired of being called a racist. And I'll say that for my brothers and sisters in law enforcement, we are sick and tired of being called racist. We are not racist. That would have come out years ago if we were, but this is not 1942 in Southern Mississippi or whatever, pick the state you want. This is a modern day uh, way of doing things. And uh, you know, I cannot see people in a car at night. I don't have x-ray vision. I have no idea what color they may be. If they're purple or pink, I have no idea until I stop them. It's based on, our interaction with the public is based on a reaction. And the reaction is to crime, whether that be a simple traffic ticket or a murder. And we get called. We're a reactionary force in many cases. Although we'd like to be proactive and have that whole omnipresence out there, nobody wants to go do that because you're putting yourself at great risk, both financially and for your freedoms, potentially, and it's just not worth it. The statistics do not support what they're doing at all. Facts matter, and nobody's looking at the facts. They're working emotionally. Police officers live in the real world, not some theoretical world of uh, propaganda. That is not what we do. And I know it, and anybody who's worn the badge uh, and out there knows it as well. And so we're usually fairly stoic about these issues and we let people you know, whine and cry and do whatever they wanna do. But ultimately we kind of maintain our composure. Uh, and at this point, uh, the composure is uh, uh, wearing thin and people are saying, screw it, I'm out of here. I'm not putting up with this and they're leaving. And it's interesting that the people that are leaving are kind of mid-career. You'd think they would kind of be stuck, but they're actually leaving. Uh, but the early retirements, you know, boy, that's going to hit the pensions hard. Everything that they fear law enforcement is doing, you couldn't have put in a better set of rules to cause that to happen. And they should have, could have, and would have if they had, um, you know, some people involved that understood Involved law enforcement. We have some extremely smart people in law enforcement willing to upgrade our profession any day of the week. Typically, the reason it doesn't get upgraded is not because we don't want it. It's because there's no money for it. And oftentimes, there are young guys in the, in the departments, you know, I want to go to the latest school. I want to get certified in this. It's the best way to do it. And there is no money. The chief or the sheriff or the director says, sorry, pal, there's no money, you know we'll call you when we got it. I've got a father who was a master sergeant in state police. I've got a brother who was a lieutenant in the state police. And I myself, obviously, working for the state. But my son says, no way am I going to get involved in that mess. And, you know, he's got military training and, you know, all that sort of thing. He could easily transition. He's got a bachelor's degree and all that sort of thing. No way does he want to get involved. He goes, and he even worries about me, even though I'm at the real tail end of retirement type situation. Uh, being out there. He goes, this is just too scary, dad. I just will not do this. Yeah, this is a pillar of the structure of law enforcement. And when you remove that pillar, you know, things fall. And what's going to fall is actively doing police work for fear and that you're walking through a landmine. If you can imagine in Vietnam, they had set so many landmines, they're still clearing landmines and people don't want to just go strolling out through there you know, you need all kinds of special help to do that. We can't be walking around tiptoe and do law enforcement. Law enforcement is a system of keeping checks and balances in society to keep the uh, bad folks from affecting the good folks. We're the one in the middle. And those people are special people. They come to us with a passion to assist fellow man and to be a warrior spirit in a lot of ways, um, you know, and we can't let them down. So a qualified immunity is such a pillar of this that if it goes, so goes the community that you serve. It will have major issues in my opinion. And uh, I hope that this is just a blip in time that, uh, you know, better sense will prevail eventually. But in the meantime, uh, this mass exodus 
will continue in this state, states that don't do it, which is kind of interesting because we have 50 little laboratories around the United States. And as we get the opportunity to see what these laboratories produce, uh, we'll see the fruits of that or the failures. And in Illinois, I, at this point, it's going to look like a failure. Well, they need to speak out. And there's a lot of forms for that. But honestly, as corny as it sounds, writing a letter to your state senators and state representatives, a handwritten letter <clears throat> is so much better than a email. And, and that sounds old fashioned snail mail stuff. But if you can't do that, then any kind of contact with your state legislators are definitely necessary. But speaking to your newspaper, neighborhood groups, and so forth, these are the people that are potential victims of this thing. Law enforcement will just leave and go to some other state, we'll, we'll move into a different um, profession. But the communities are the ones that are ultimately going to be hurt. And, you know, you don't want your kid hurt playing at the park. You don't want your grandma hurt when somebody's breaking into her house. Uh, you want police to show up and do what they got to do. And right now, this hamstrings police in a, in a very significant way. Yeah, writing them a letter is great, but a lot of people don't have time for that. I think what's, you know, it's critical that you call them, call your General Assembly members, pick mm -hmm. up the phone, an actual phone call to them, and don't stop just once. Keep calling them, keep calling them, keep calling them and let them know how you feel. Uh, these are the people that you elected into office. Uh, don't be afraid to let them know how you feel, even on a daily basis. Keep calling them and letting them know. Also, um, you know, get involved. Um, if you don't know what's going on, go out and find the facts for yourself. Don't rely on uh, the news agencies and, and your major news networks to let you know what's really true. Do some investigative work, go out, you know, find out the truth for yourself, find out the facts for yourself, find out what they are. Uh, it's amazing. There's been studies done recently on, uh, you know, a lot of people seem to think that, and this is mainly because of the news media and, and, and the, the pushing of this false narrative. There's a lot of people think that the uh, there's a lot more unarmed black people shot by the police every year than what there actually are. Uh, in 2019, it was 12. 12 is all. Um, you know, people don't know that. They don't understand that. There are some people who actually think it was, in, it was in the thousands, I mean, based on some studies that were done. So go out and get the truth. If you don't know, call us. Call the FOP. We'll let you know the truth. We'll, we'll give you the truth straight answer. If you want to donate to the FOP, if, if you want to donate to our political action fund or, or, or whatever you want to do, uh, we, we can always use that kind of help. But in the end, the one place that you're going to make the difference, the one place that you're going to uh, affect change is at the uh, voting booth. In 2022, again, you're going to have to hold these people responsible who supported this bill and, and those the, the governor himself that signed it into law. We have to hold these people accountable for that. Um, and in, in the end, if we have to vote them out and change, and that's what we need to do. We need to get some people in there that support law enforcement. I will say, I will say also that some of these uh, in, in this state, as we've talked about, is, you know, it's the Democrats that are particularly pushing this, particularly the Black Caucus. Um, and the Republicans have been lockstep with law enforcement. But I will say, <clears throat> some of the moderate Democrats are almost panicky in a way. They want our help to try to fix this mess. Because they've got to, as Chris said, they've got to line up for 2022. And nobody wants to be the anti-law enforcement guy. I don't care what party you come from. Very few want to take that banner and stick it on their head. Uh, but we are going to, and the public should as well, hold them accountable uh, for the votes they make. And to do something at the 11th hour, 30 minutes before they get out of office, are you kidding me? The most, from people who've been monitoring the General Assembly here for 40 years, it's the worst thing they've ever seen, the way this debacle came about and the indirect pressures that were put on members of the General Assembly and sometimes probably direct pressure. Uh, that is just unacceptable in a democracy to have that kind of vitriol uh, in our General Assembly. And it disgusts me, quite frankly, that it would get to that point. You know, I think it's absolute hypocrisy that many of these General Assembly members who are the most vocal about wanting to end qualified immunity for law enforcement officers 
are protected by an even stronger form of immunity than qualified immunity. And, and it's again, where I say you need to hold these people responsible because the, the ones that authored this bill and they signed it, let's say because they did away with no cash bond, you know, somebody gets out on, on, on bond that's committed a crime and they go back and they got, God forbid, but they go back and kill one of your family members. Wouldn't you want to hold these people responsible for passing that law? And the fact of the matter is you can't because, you know, general assembly members have what's called absolute immunity. It's not even qualified immunity. Law enforcement officers have qualified immunity. They have to qualify for it. General assembly members have absolute immunity. There's nothing you can do about it, whether they did it right, wrong, good reasons, bad reasons, uh, whatever. They have absolute immunity. And I, I just think that's important that you throw that in there, that it's, it's, it's hypocrisy to me. And so much of this police reform is hypocrisy. I think it's important that we throw that in there and let people know that uh, police officers have qualified immunity. They have to qualify for it. It only protects good cops. General Assembly members, absolute immunity. Big difference. Yeah, and you know, in fact, the only thing you can arrest them for when they're in session is treason and murder. <laughs>